So you thought you had your fill of football yesterday. I have news for you. We're turning our attention now to more football on the Sportsmax Zone. The Europa League quarterfinal stage ended earlier on Thursday with all eight teams involved in second leg action. Sportsmax's feature match saw English Premier League outfit Liverpool travelling to Bergamo in the north of Italy as they sought to overturn a 3-0 deficit against the Serie A club Atalanta. We have the highlights. Luis Diaz gets there. Jack Post charging into the box. Diaz pass one challenge. Dug out the cross. Here's the boss line. Alexander Arnold blocked. Handball is the shout. The referee's given the penalty. Trajeri who heads away to the edge of the box. Alexander Arnold's blast back in. It does hit the left arm clearly. It's away from the body. Salah on the spot. Salah absolutely emphatic with his kick. They're a team in a hurry. They're a team that have got the ball rolling as they needed it to. Lost by Trent Alexander Arnold. Ederson, lovely pass. Skamaka didn't get a hold of the shot. Miranchuk, oh, what was Kanate doing there? He seemed to switch off. Allowed Miranchuk a swing at the ball. Through towards Salah. Salah in on goal to lift it over Musa, but lift it wide. Zappa Costa. Through towards Gakpo, and the flag has stayed down. Gakpo with a lot to do. Saboslai. Gakpo slick, Salah, Musso saves. Robertson now, and the flag is up. The referee didn't see it, and it goes up again. Zappa Costa's going to let Coke Minders run with it. And it is the full time whistle. And Atalanta can celebrate, knocking Liverpool out of the Europa League. Jurgen Klopp, who's had so much success, well, he won't be having any more in Europe with his beloved Liverpool team. So Atalanta getting the result they needed today. They are through, along with uh, Marseille, Bayer Leverkusen and AS Roma. Also successful today in those second leg quarterfinal fixtures. And we have Brent Sancho now joining us to review what happened today in uh, the Europa League uh, quarterfinal action. Well, Brent, we had discussed these matches last week when we were reviewing Liverpool's shocking loss and uh, so on. Um, they weren't able to, to get the result they wanted. It had an early goal which suggested that they were trying to develop or get the momentum to go on to get uh, a big victory to keep themselves alive. But it didn't happen for them. Atlanta were stubborn. Atalanta. Yeah, we expect, yeah, we expected that, didn't we? We, we talked about, uh, of course, uh, when Liverpool first lost uh, in the first leg, we, we did feel that um, it may be a bit too much for them. Uh, and uh, the decay in Liverpool's play is, I think, probably going on a couple of weeks. And I, I may pinpoint uh, possibly that Manchester United uh, loss that they had in the Cup. Uh, and since then, they really haven't been themselves. And uh, I want to zero in on a player in particular. I think... Uh, Mohamed Salah, in his scoring sharpness, just hasn't been the same. Uh, in a lot of the situations and scenarios that we saw him uh, create and, and make into not just goal-scoring opportunities, but putting the ball into the back of the net, it's just not happening for him this season. And they and Liverpool have, have you know, I don't want to say they've, they've, rode, they've rode Salah's back for quite some time, but they've, they've been able to get the sort of input from people like him to make them champions, to get them to across the line. Uh, but that hasn't happened in the last couple of games, and it's unfortunate because it's come at the business end uh, of the season. And because of that, uh, they've gone out now and, and surprisingly have gone out against, let's let's not take anything away from them, a very well-organized, a good play in Atlanta team. Yeah, and a, a, Atlanta, fine, sorry. Yeah, a fine penalty there struck by, by Salah. Uh, but you're right, his goal-scoring efficiency has declined significantly in recent times. There was a loved effort that he missed today, Brent. Um, very, very wide of the goal. The goalkeeper was way off his line. It was, at that level, a pretty straightforward effort, and he missed the goal by miles. And more importantly, Lance, by his standards, yes. that is something that he would normally put into the back of the net. 
that is something that he thrives on and he wasn't able to do it. It's a glorious opportunity. I think once he settled himself right about here and he knew he was going to love him, nine times out of ten, Mohamed Salah puts that into the back of the net and it just did not happen for him. But truth be told, I think not just him, but the entire Liverpool squad just didn't do enough for me in this tie to deserve to go through. That was a glorious opportunity. Or Obviously, many could argue that if that had went in, the, the, put the, the, the game uh, pendulum may have swung towards Liverpool and put the pressure on the, the Atalanta team. Uh, but uh, that's all uh, hindsight. And hindsight, of course, is, is 2020. But when you, when you pull it back and you look at Salah, that miss there, I think, is indicative. It's, a, it's of course, it's a, it's, it's a monument of what Liverpool is right now, currently. They're just lacking that uh, efficiency in the goal scoring end, and they're lacking that efficiency in the defensive side of things as well. And Brent, I really feel it for Jurgen Klopp. Uh, he's on his way out, <laughs> of course. He would have announced that before. And I just want to remind the viewers of the time, you know, it was really recent where Liverpool was one of the dominant teams, of course, competing with City for the EPL title. Just a team that, despite injuries, their players were able to step up, those who were fit and, of course, ensure that they walked away with a win. How they went about doing that, only Klopp and his team knows. But this time, I see Klopp you know in a different light and for me i'm not a liverpool fan and that's public knowledge but i feel sad to see him exit in this way well i think the, the romantic side of things would want to see him leave and with winning many trophies and, and and of course riding off in the sunset uh with a bag full of silverware but uh, if you start to look at the, the body of work that he's done it's nothing short of phenomenal and i may even go on record and argue that he's probably one of the if not the greatest liverpool manager and the reason why i say that to put context in you have to think about where he found liverpool where he found this club the club that that really looked like they've lost their identity the culture of the club is not what it should have been and they hadn't won anything in quite a long time but here he comes in and be able to transform the club into as you rightfully said not just someone that won titles but was consistently very, very good and played high quality football. So when I remember Klopp and when I look at it, albeit, of course, as I said, we would have liked to see him leave uh, with a bag full of trophies. There's nothing short but admiration for what he's been able to do. And I go back to what I always say on the show. It is very difficult for any manager in any sport to keep a team winning. The likes of Pep Guardiola, Carlo Ancelotti, and of, of course, uh, you, this man now, Johan Klopp has done that and you cannot take that away from them. I'm talking about in the modern era, of course, I can go back to Alex Ferguson, etc. But I talk about modern era of football, to be able to do that consistently is nothing short of amazing. Yeah, Brent, I wonder if in his next life he could return as Manchester United manager. No, I hope not for his sake as well. <laughs> I know you, you know what, Ricardo, I say that in the humblest way because I, I still feel, and I've always said this, I just think that Manchester United is very, very toxic outside well, of the Brent, Brent, the Brent, Brent, let's not do that rhetoric. Brent, let's, let's, let's do let's, that. Let's, let's, do let's do talk it. about West Ham, Brent. Let's talk Brent. about West Ham and the fact that Mikhail Antonio uh, scored for them today. The Jamaican international gave them a chance. It was 2-1 on aggregate at that stage against Bar Leverkusen. But the newly minted German champions were able to hold on and draw this encounter 1-1 and win the tie 3-1. Yeah, it was a good strike uh, by that man, Antonio. That's bread and butter, pissed off, big, powerful man up front and be able to glance the ball in the goal. And his conquer calf counterpart who came in for this leg, Edison Alvarez. I thought he was outstanding as well uh, for the Hammers. But it was always going to be a difficult prop proposition. And this Leverkusen team, as much as we talk about the cities and Real Madrid's of this world, you have to give this team a bit of a shout out. Yes, they may not be in the same technical level, as those two teams that I mentioned, but what the Leverkusen team brings to the table with, of course, there's not the same sort of, of, of skilled players that the likes of Madrid and, of course, Manchester City have, is very exceptional. They are tough to beat. There is why they're undefeated so far in this season. And I would not be surprised if they march on for the rest of this season without losing a football game. Yeah, that's interesting because the next question I was going to ask you, Brent, is who are favourites now in the Europa League? Marseille to face Atalanta and Roma to take on Leverkusen in the last four of this competition. And almost shockingly, no English team in the last four of either the Europa League 
or the Champions League. Of course, the Europa Conference League has Aston Villa through to the last four, um, although Leon Bailey missed a penalty today, but we're not quite talking about that. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it does put a, a spoke in the wheel that uh, English league is, is the best league in world football, but as for another day, uh, no, it's look, at the end of the day, this Leverkusen team is everything that it's been built up to, uh, and I would be surprised if they don't. Of course, you have to keep an eye on that Atalanta team, because what they showed at, at Anfield, if they are to turn on that sort of uh, display again, it will be a difficult afternoon for Leverkusen. What I like about Bayern Leverkusen, is that they're very, very comfortable in the skin. They understand uh, what they need to do tactically. They, they, they are tactic, tactically, of course, uh, being able to move and shift and do things differently. They're awkward to play against. And they are a team that you are very much guaranteed you're going to get all that you can handle from them. So it's it's when you look at what uh, Alonso has done with, with this squad, uh, and of course, another person who is leaving, who might be leaving, I shouldn't, I, I shouldn't say that he is, because of course he said he's going to resign and stay. But uh, I think he could possibly leave. But if he does, he would have lost such a tremendous imprint onto German football by what he's done with this Leverkusen team. Of course, a team he must remember had absolutely no chance in terms of the bookies' perspective and all the experts of even finishing in the top four of the German Bundesliga. And here they are uh, looking to close off the league with winning even more silverware. Yeah, so that's your pick then, uh, Brent. Leverkusen for the Europa League. Yeah, I would have to go that way, Lance. It's, uh, as much as I like to, to bet Ricardo money, I think this one he could certainly uh, rest assured <laughs> yes. that he will win because uh, I just feel that that uh, semi-final against Roma, I don't fancy this Roma team at all. Uh, I think they're fortunate to get through with the tie with AC, with, with AC Milan. Uh, and I feel that other tie between Atalanta and a very, very good uh, Marseille team should... Yeah. Uh, should provide some interest, but for me, Leverkusen all the way. Yeah, Brent, if you bet my money on, what was it, Monday for the PSG Barcelona tie at $4.50 from Just Bet, then you would be a winner right now and you'd be rich. But did nobody you, listened to me. Did you? <laughs> That's not important, Mariah. But you need to take your own advice. <laughs> well, by the Listen, way, as I keep saying, I don't bet, right? I, I, and, and I've never done it, but what I have done is make educated investments in sports. <laughs> That's why I told you to make me a signatory on your bank account. You would have been a rich man. <laughs> Break time. Thank you so much, Brent. All right, guys. Have a good one.